let's talk about a group ideal experiment. So last time we talked about both individual ideal experiments and realistic experiments. This time I want to move back to an ideal experiment so we can introduce some more terminology. So a group ideal experiment. So again, let's say we are interested in going to the doctor and the doctor will be our treatment and will be A. Instead of studying you as the person of interest, we're gonna be studying the entire United States of America. So a population of individuals. This population of individuals will denote with a little person in a circle. The one thing that we need to know about this population of individuals will be that the population size is measured by some number in. So uh, the US population is something like 370 million or something like that. In this case, I'm just gonna be denoting the population size with the capital letter in. Uh, I'll be using this notation for the rest of these lectures. We're gonna be using the classic outcome. We're gonna be using the number of days sick. So the number of days sick, and this will equal Y. And we're gonna be interested in something a little bit different. We're gonna be interested in the average causal effect the average causal effect, not necessarily the unit level causal effects. So we're gonna be doing an experiment in order to figure this out. So what's our experiment? So the first thing we do in our experiment is we poll in people. So we poll every single person in the United States of America. We get each person sick, okay? And then we send them to a doctor. We then measure their outcome under that doctor. We then put them in a time machine. We get them to the point where they just became sick and then we treat them to no doctor. We say, you can't go to a doctor now. And so for each person, also I'll denote the first person with Y sub one, we'll go ahead and get how many days they were sick under the doctor, maybe five, and how many days sick they were under the non-doctor, uh, seven. And we'll get this for every single person. So we'll go all the way from Y sub one to Y sub N. So in this case, maybe the doctor uh, for Y sub N, uh, the disease is really terrible, and so it, it's you know, 10 days under the doctor, but only two days under no doctor, okay? In order to figure out the average causal effect, all we do is we take the average of the A column, so we take the average of the treated column, and we can call this Y sub A. Now, people will call this in times Y sub A bar, they'll put a little bar above the Y, that being said, in future videos, I'm probably not likely going to do this because we're just going to be dealing with the average causal effect uh, in all future videos. So I'll probably just uh, not use this bar, though Y sub A will in this case mean the average uh, of the people in A column, the average of the treated people. And we'll go ahead and we'll take the average of the untreated people. So in this case, uh, Y bar sub not A. We'll take their difference and this will give us, ta-da, the average causal effect. So Y sub A minus not A, and we can add a bar here as well. We then take this average causal effect and we can use it for our studies. So let's say we did this for this population over here for the United States of America, and we get the average causal effect of zero. Now wait, you say, the average causal effect isn't necessarily equal to the unit level causal effects, right? So the average causal effect is not necessarily, does not necessarily equal the unit level causal effects. So in this case, even though going to see the doctor has zero causal effect on average, in terms of the number of days sick, if you've got the cold, which I think this is actually true, but I need to look that up. Um, you see for particular individuals, it can have an effect. So for the first individual, they actually get better two days sooner if they see the doctor. And for the last individual, they get better, well, they take eight days longer to get better if they see the doctor. So this is a very important result. So this means that you can have an average causal effect that's positive and still harm people with your causal effect. Okay, I want to note two more things before we continued on. These two things are the assumptions that are unrealistic in this ideal experiment. So we're dealing with the ideal, so what is unrealistic? Well, obviously the first thing is we can't put people in a time machine because we don't have a time machine. This is the fundamental problem of causal inference. So number one is the fundamental problem uh, just control Z that is the fundamental problem of causal inference. Number two is that we can't necessarily poll in people. So we can't poll the entire United States because that's really, really expensive. So number two, in this case, is what I call problem of statistical inference, just plain statistical inference. We're gonna be discussing next time when we look at a normal or regular group experiment how we'll deal with this one, the fundamental problem of causal inference, and two, the problem of statistical inference in this example.